This Earth Day, the theme is Restore the Earth. This means acting on climate change, switching to emerging technology, tackling environmental racism, and cleaning up the planet. It is vital that each and every one of us does our part to restore our Earth, not just because we care, not just because of the next generation, but because this is our home and it is the right thing to do. What you ask, can you do? The small things we all can do as individuals, small businesses, and major corporations will make a difference this Earth Day, such as washing your gas and electric bill, turning off lights when you leave the room, or in the office when you see that no one else is around, unplugging unused technology, turning off taps, switching your cleaning products to those that are more sustainable and cutting down on plastic. So this Earth Day, the theme is restore the Earth. Are you playing your part? The key for the Earth challenge is education. Thinking about the future, the climate change, we often hear these words. What planet will we leave to our children? But I think having in mind in this issue of education, I think that one has to phrase it in the other way. What children will we leave to our Earth? Climate change is the defining issue for my generation. And I, as many of my contemporaries, am increasingly concerned about the devastating loss of biodiversity that we have been experiencing for the duration of our lifetimes. Many of my generation are deeply attached to the beauty of nature, but are also acutely aware of its fragility. The way we think about the conflict between sustainability on the one hand and capitalism and consumerism on the other and the, the way we appreciate nature and our willingness to defend it, I think will leave a mark in history. As an equality and discrimination lawyer, however, I am also acutely aware of how the harms of climate change affect each of us differently. For instance, women are often disproportionately victims of gender-based violence following environmental disasters. Poorer and more vulnerable communities, often ethnic minorities, are likely to suffer the effects of climate change, for instance, air pollution in large cities, a lot more severely. And of course, the global south, which is far less responsible for climate change than the global north, is the hardest hit. I think climate change therefore gives us a chance to think deeply about the inequalities that continue to plague our societies. It, are, it is a reason to act more promptly, more decisively and more courageously to revert, revert the course of our politics in order to ensure that we can all live a fairer, more equal and more sustainable, safer life. What can lawyers do? Well, in a way, this is an easy question for human rights and environmental lawyers, because there's no part of human and ecological existence that will not be touched by climate change so we can try to bring our skills to bear to meet the climate crisis. Lawyers should look to learn from those already working in this area. Communities, scientists, environmental groups, children. Law can be part of the problem, entrenching existing issues, but it can also be part of the solution. At Dirty Street, we're already helping communities adversely impacted by climate change and environmental harms. We also represent those that stand up for the environment and help others take on harmful greenwashing of polluting operations. And we firmly believe that any lawyer should take on this challenge. Already organizations like the Chancery Lane Project are enabling lawyers with diverse backgrounds in energy, shipping, commercial and other work to make a difference by redrafting contracts to ensure that commercial operations cause less harm to the environment or to devise policies that can help us transition to a safer future. So the overall message is, all lawyers will be, if they are not already, climate change lawyers. 
and we all have a small part to play in protecting our planet.